Hello, I'm Eric Day. I'm a product manager at Coringo, and I'm going to tell you about our portal, our content portal product. Um, this is the, um, the, the reason for our portal is that uh, we've talked in other, in other presentations about our multi-tenancy, and what naturally comes out of the multi-tenancy is this range of users of the system. And they roughly break down into these two areas of administrators and end users. And here is this is this is really what they're they're after is that administrators are interested in um, managing the resources of the system, and so that includes things such as being able to provision uh, provision storage to delegate. Um, authority to do things and uh, to to manage uh, the the day-to-day -day happenings in the in the system itself with regard to resources um, this is this is centric to the the content in the cluster so this is not about you know disk drive necessarily or network connections this is more about you know what is inside the system um, so management of resources from administrator point of view means I'm going to set up new tenants. Uh, I'm going to set up new storage domains in the system. Uh, perhaps I'm going to give ownership of a tenant to somebody else, or I'm going to give ownership of a domain to somebody such that they have autonomy within that unit of the system while the administrator maintains an upper level, um, upper level control over what, what, ha what happens. As you move down the, 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 the scale from the, from the super user administrators of the system, you get to the end users. And the end users are interested in managing content in the system. So they're about you know, files I put into the system and what are the permissions on those, uh, those, those files, those objects. Um, how, do I, how do I bring together and search on those? How do I use uh, collections of those objects to, that, are, that are meaningful to me? So, they're interested in things such as storing, viewing, and they're managing, but they're managing typically at the content level or at creating buckets uh, within, the, within the system. So this is a, this is my crude cave drawing here of management scopes within, within our system. Um, and management scopes are interesting um, we talked in other discussions about how policies can be uh, merged together from top down, down all the way down into the bucket, the bucket level of the system. And this shows kind of that relationship that's going on where you've got the cluster level here, which is the whole system, you know, everything in it. And then within that, you've got these groupings of tenants. Tenants would be things such as um, entities, resellers, for example, that are going to be responsible for multiple storage domains within the system, and you want a way to group them, give them a grouping that makes uh, that, that makes it so, so they can they can manage the stuff that they're responsible for, and yet they stay segregated from areas that they're that are not within their realm of responsibility. Um, a heading down the hierarchy here, you get into the storage domains, and this is where we were talking. We've talked. Er um, earlier about uh, this is where content actually goes. So when you put content into Swarm, it's going into a storage domain. Um, we, we, we easily let you have you know, hundreds or thousands of storage domains within the system. There's really no, no limit for us. They're, they're very tiny um, impact in terms of provisioning. Um, and then getting all the way down to the lower levels of, uh, of buckets within the system. And you're, you, you're familiar with buckets from the uh, Amazon style, um, uh, style protocol and, and layout. Um, and I have, I have labeled particular administrators in this graph, but this is by no means, these are not defined within the system in any formalized definition. You are actually allowed to create as many or as few roles within the system as you as is appropriate for your deployment. So in, a, in some deployments, one, one role of one administrator of everything could be appropriate, whereas in other systems, you may have an MSP that maintains some high-level control, and then they delegate tenant administration down to their resellers. And then their resellers are then responsible for managing their own customers uh, within the, the, the scope of, uh, of that tenant. 
Uh, the other things to point out in this um, in this architecture is the it's, it's labeled ID the identity system and the access control policies where those live down through the uh, through the the hierarchy. Um, these mean that you can put them at these points, although you're not required to. So, if you want to live with one identity management system for the whole for the whole shooting match, that's fine. If you wish to redefine it as you go down, you can do that along the way. So I talked in another presentation about how we can support one or many identity management systems as appropriate. This is where those identity management systems uh, go within the system. Also, um, you're familiar with the S3 bucket policies. That's here. But we also then bring that concept up at the higher levels throughout the system so that you can have higher levels make an expression about access down to the lower levels. Is there think, a question? I think I know the answer. I'm just going to okay. throw it out. Sure. Can I use different access level or access, um, say, Active Directory for one thing? Yes, you may. Open ID for something else so, or whatever at different levels of the... So let me give you a real good example. Right here, a very common one is Linux PAM. Sure. Right, um, that's where... So I've got my administrators who are you know, probably the physical server administrators, right. and I've defined them here in PAM. And then as you come down the levels, you can get into... This could be an LDAP. That could be a different right. LDAP tree. This could be a different LDAP server from this. Okay. So yes, you can you can use I all of the them. answer was yes because I'm thinking yeah I think uh, thank you for your question yeah, that's yeah, yeah. that's a, that's a good point though so you can mix and match the identity systems okay, good. throughout these levels and can you have can one bucket be assigned to multiple can I say like at my bucket admin they can either come from LDAP or they can come from OpenID or just that as an example. So let me answer it a little bit different could, way. I don't think you let could. me answer it a little bit different way because if I give you the direct answer, it would be confusing. Sure. The 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 you notice that a bucket does not actually have an identity system. It's only on the storage domain. The, the okay. identity system it's doesn't policy. go down to the yeah. bucket. Okay. However, there is a concept in our system of cross um, domain and cross tenant um, access control. Okay. And so that you can you could assign the owner of this bucket could be somebody that actually comes from a different tenant than that bucket and domain live in. And so there are ways of scoping users within our system that you could say that you are referring to somebody that's outside of the, this tenant or outside of this domain and coming for some someplace else. It's like an active directory child domain or something yeah. like that or a different forest or something like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that, that's actually a powerful feature that you could yeah. give cross cross company cross-company access control within the, within the system where you're saying users or groups from another company are allowed to do something in this bucket. Right. For example. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so without getting into the details here, let me show you the actual portal itself. So I needed to set the stage there so that we could, we could know what we were looking at here. Um, within our Within our system here, no, I'm afraid that we don't have a lot of uh, we don't have a lot of tenants within our own with our own cluster here. But I'm looking at a top level that I can I'm going to drill down through the tenants in our system, and then down into a particular storage domain within that tenant. Sorry about the mouse. Yeah. And now I'm looking at a particular storage domain within the system. You know, I'm, I've come down through the tenant down to the storage domain. And so now this is really where an end user of the system really enters into the portal and where a lot, you know, so if you're gonna, in terms of numbers, most users start out at this view. They start out at the, I'm interested in managing my content view. I'm not an administrator, I'm not provisioning new tenants in the system, I'm not making new storage domains, nor do I have permissions in a lot of cases, but I'm interested in using my content. And so they start out here at a view where we're showing them the collections within the system. And this is, this is, the, new, this is the new part that we're, we're really pushing and talking about here. We've had this search capability in our system for a very long time, and we're now bringing it together and making it accessible to the end users. So how does an end user use it without having to program, you know, and do, do object storage, you know, REST-based HTTP programming in the system? And 
we're going to continue to expand on this concept of collections in the future. So there will be more to come here. This is just making it initially approachable to the end user. Um, within our system, so I'm gonna to go to this canned collection here called All Buckets. It's actually not very interesting. There's not that many buckets in the system. I've got this one where I use as a dumping ground really for everything in the system. So it's got, I can't scroll very well with this mouse, but I, you know, I've got nearly 600, 600 objects in here of varying kinds of things. I've got some, I've got some medical content in here. I've got some um, archived um, Scientific American magazines in here. I've got you know, some images, movies, that kind of stuff. So I've really just used it as a dumping ground into this, into this bucket. And this would be representative of, say, some place that a file share dumped things, dumped things into. So how do I make use of that for real as a, as a, as a user? I mean, the, the, the names and the listing there is not as important as attributes about the content in the system. You know, the names are less important than the, than the metadata on the objects. So I've actually created some collections here. I've got one called these H HTML documents uh, where I have, as I mentioned, the Scientific American ones in there. I can view those. I can view the metadata I have on these. I put a bunch of custom metadata on these objects here. This gives you a, a view of some of that where I've got things like the copyright, the original publication date, et cetera, on there. And, um, you know, in terms of an archival system, this is a perfectly good way to serve up mm -hmm. media-rich content. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've got a mix of, I've got a mix of text, hyperlinks, um, I've got images, anything else inside of here. Eric, zoom in. Zoom. <coughs> I'm over time. Okay. <laughs> okay. I was actually going to add in too. I could see like a use case. Like in a retail, I'll leave it so, as an example, like a retail, like archival, yep. digital archive Absolutely. from like hundreds of years ago. Yes. Thank you very much. Oh, so that, that was the, the, the purpose of this is to kind of spark some imagination about there's a lot of different ways you can use this. Our system is actually a, is a web server of sorts. So there's this, this could have been very active content that actually had JavaScript running with it. Because yeah, you and, can serve this up from anywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very easily. Is there a way for this to integrate more um, localized to the workstation so the user doesn't have, like if you use it as archival, they don't have a bunch of places to go find stuff like their file share, SharePoint, you know what I mean? Like kind of bringing that all together. That, yeah, I like, I like the idea of that because, so collections for us are um, at, at the very, the core essential part of a collection is a saved search and it's a search on the metadata of the object. So you could express a search on the, showing the, the different collections that are available up here at the, um, at the top level. You, you can have search that, depending on, if you're looking for archival of a particular type mm -hmm. in the system, you could have a collection that shows you that archival type of content. Mm -hmm. And these, these, these searches are, are live in the system. So when I clicked on that and it built that list, it's actually showing me a, a view of you know, what is in the system right now. And so that updates over time. And TW is going to, we've got an example of that coming up. Okay, but okay. right now we've shown this as a list, but a list is, is one way of looking at a collection, mm -hmm. but that's not the only way that we have in mind. We have in mind additional visualizations. You could imagine that you could show uh, images by their EXIF yeah, um, I mean, You could export the HTML or anything mm -hmm. from that point and have a complete catalog. Yes. I mean, oh. if it's not already there, but mm -hmm. I assume you could. So, Eric, what's the difference between uh, this portal and your previous portal or previous administrative panel? I mean, is it the security um, segmentation or? We had a, <coughs> we had a, um, a, a previous product called the admin portal. And the admin portal was geared just at super user administrators. Oh, okay. and, and what we found was that it did not fit with what people naturally wanted to do with it, which was um, I, I had the two user classes here, which were administrators who were interested in managing the resources in the system and down to end users that were interested in managing the content within the system. And so <laughs> we went back and we did a clean sheet redesign of this with that with both of those or with that actually whole scale of users in mind. Mm 